Hey everyone, welcome to day eight of Vlogmas on my channel. So this is your start of the video reminder that I am doing Vlogmas of course and that there is a new video every single day between the 1st and the 24th of December. So catch up on what you've missed if you've missed any and don't forget to check back every day until Christmas day for a new video. Today's video was actually originally just part of my London vlogs but I realised I took half an hour of footage inside Harrods so like I did with my Fortnum and Mason Christmas tour which if you've not seen already I will link up in the eye that is that just gets me in the best mood. I thought we'd do it as a separate video and do a Harrods at Christmas tour which is what today's video is. So yeah without any further ado let's get into Harrods at Christmas 2021. Okay guys, so we are standing outside Harrods. Obviously it's daytime at the moment so you can't really see the lights. I think it'll probably be dark or dark hair, at least by the time we're leaving. Hopefully I'll be able to insert some clips of it all kind of properly lit up at night so that you can see it better. I say at night, it's it gets dark at like four o'clock these days. Let's have a look, it's um, Chanel have taken over the windows. I saw that on, I saw the unveiling of the windows on Instagram, so I know that already, but let's go have a look at them. I do like this trunk. I like anything in sort of box or trunk. I'm very into it. So yeah, this is the sort of theme of it. It continues on from last year's advert when you had Marion Cotillard. It starts in Paris and then you go dance, so Chanel's whole thing this year is Ask for the Moon. So as you can see, it's a glittery rock meant to look a bit like the moon so that's the Chanel number no. five campaign I thought they might have changed it this year because it's the 100 years of Chanel number no. five but they have just kind of continued from last year's which I suppose it was probably a very expensive advert to make so they probably will stick with it for a while oh I love this one look it's like you've got all the Le Leon constellations in the back and it goes this is like all zodiac -y, which I am into but which Coco Chanel was also into so in the style of constellations you've got the moon, the Chanel logo, number five, the bottle, the stars and the moon and the lion because obviously Leo was her star sign. But yeah I'm very into these trunks you can imagine they're just window dressing and not available for, for purchase. Oh look, that one's a trunk too, but it's like the bottle shape. Although, is that, no, I was going to say is that the advent calendar, but it's not, because here's the advent calendar. I can't lie, I was tempted. I was very tempted for about five seconds and then I, I came to my senses. It's very reflective, but there's the, the Chanel number no. fives going round. In sort of constellation of their own. So there's the hashtag ask for the moon and then again this window's got the actual moon in it as imagined in gold glitter by Chanel. There we go ask for the moon and you've got some of the advert showing the lovely Marion Cotillard. I'm sure her name is actually pronounced in a very beautiful French way that I am not remotely making a good job of. This is the last one I think, so you've got the trunks and then this is like a big lump of the moon with a Chanel number no. 5 made out of the rock. I wouldn't mind a bottle of Chanel number no. 5 that size. I can't even, like even standing right at the other side of the street I can't get this in, but I'll put a picture of it, but this is the Chanel number no. five facade entrance. So these front windows are not particularly Christmassy. You've got saloon stuff there. Oh, here we go. Witness a spectacular. That that's more what I want. Oh, it's a Glen Fiddich window as well. I drink their whiskey. these windows are all like alcohol windows. Here we go we have a Carolina Herrera window. So you've got the 
some of her makeup items and her perfumes in amongst lots of glittery silver things. This is an Estee Lauder one. So you get like glittery macarons, a big advanced night repair. I do enjoy macarons. I feel like they went out of favour for a little while there, but I'm hoping this is a sign that they might be on the up again. This window is Mew Mew. Um, so you've got a spinning Christmas pudding in the window there. And some shoes. Some more shoes over here. Bag. Large cracker. Anyway, let's head in through these beautiful doors. These are the decorations around the archways and things. They're so, so pretty. Just turned the brightness up so that you can see the colours better. But yeah, they are super beautiful. You see the same on the other side going through to fashion accessories. Uh, I Want, I was going to say I need to, I don't need to, but I want to swatch a few things at Gucci Beauty and at Guerlain, so we're heading into the, the beauty bit. Chanel have got this middle stand here. Oh, it's lovely, isn't it? More of these gorgeous trunks, which I'm obviously very into. I am just doing a wonder of the beauty department, so we've also got these beautiful floral arrangements on top of some of the textures. The beautiful garlands going up the stairs. Following the signs for Christmas World. I'm excited for Christmas World. Christmas World sounds very promising. So you've got Harrods hampers. I have got my Angus bear already. Lauren very kindly got me one when she was in London earlier this year. Get more hampers piled up. There's a Christmas tree through there. And we are going into Christmas World. Green is my favourite colour and I love the like, pattern in this bauble. I'm never sure about green baubles on a green Christmas tree though, but I do think it's beautiful. This one's very pretty. I really like these ones that are like sort of glass and then if you've got a light behind them it shines through and sort of illuminates them. It's very very pretty. So this one is £14. That red one there that I showed you was £16. The one around the front was £12. That one there is 20, so there's a range of prices. I'm really enjoying how many sort of floral and botanical baubles there are this year. Um, I saw some selfridges as well. I don't know that they're the most Christmassy, but they're super pretty. I feel like you could just have them all year round. That card looks so pleasingly squishy. Yeah. Mm hmm.
I actually really like these, they're a little different. Um, but yeah, and that's £22, so it's, it's quite a statement piece for your tree. I like this one. It's only ten pounds, so it's fairly affordable. This penguin's going sledding. I love dinosaurs. Not really sure. But I totally get why they've become so accepted as a Christmas item these days, but I'm not against it. Look at this wreath, guys, isn't it amazing? It's £700, so it better be amazing to be fair, but it is stunning. So we're out of Christmas world now and just into the standard Harrods gift shop. Kind of hard to tell where one ends and the other starts at this time of year, to be fair. So yeah, this is like a, a Harrods sort of like themed tree, so more like your sort of tourist baubles as such. Quite like this one that's like the map. Quite into that. Just like illustrations of different areas, so Obviously got Harrods at the top there, Marble Arch, Borough Market, the London Eye, the v &A and the Natural History Museum. And that one's only £9, so these ones aren't too bad. If you're just looking for like a souvenir of your trip. And here are all the, the Angus bears, with the great big one on the top. Which you can buy, he's available to buy on the website. I'm sure you could buy him here as well if you had a, a card outside to take him. Little mini one's cute with just a scarf. This is the one that Lauren brought me back. It's a sort of standard Angus bear. Oh, I like these guys with their, their hats and scarves. And their green hats and scarves, obviously, which makes me like it all the more. I like this one, look, so it's so it's kind of frosted at the back and says Harrods and then on the other side it's like a window almost. Or those are like doors actually, aren't they? Like handles. Obviously they don't actually open it and then you've got like a tree inside. Oh that's really really pretty actually. And that one is £15. I'm quite taken with that, that's really cute. And there's Angus baubles, they are £15. And you've got some advent calendars here. So this one is a chocolate truffle advent calendar um, and it's £40 which is kind of what I would have expected a kind of upmarket advent calendar to be. This little children's one there is only £12 um, which is much cheaper than I would have expected it to be. Then you've got this one here which has glow in the dark candy in it which is £20 it says. I was kind of wondering if that's in the wrong place. I would have expected that to be more. Um, And then this is what's in it. So you've got candy canes, fizzy baubles, sherbet pits, and white jazzies. <laughs> Look. You can get somebody lumps of coal if they've not been good this year. So those are the lumps of coal packaging. And the lumps of coal themselves are cookie crumb coated mallows. That's quite a cute idea. I think that's like a fun, fun little thing to get. This says festive candy shapes in front of the lumps of coal, so I'm presuming that's maybe what it is like when it goes through the till or something. So they are six pounds, which I think is really quite reasonable for like something presented in a nice box that's kind of a bit novelty and a bit fun. This sounds quite good, Boxing Day Chutney, which is 
a most pocketing mix of apples, figs, cranberries and spices, our Boxing Day chutney makes perfect accompaniment to cold meats, cheeses and festive sandwiches. Generally I just enjoy chutneys. Chutneys are one of my favourite food groups. These tins are fun. So this one's Harrods Limited Finest Coffee Blend and then you've got Harrods Hot Cocoa. Um, the coffee blend is £15. And then you've got this tin here of Milk Chocolate Digestive Biscuits. Also cute, just quite kind of vintage and quite, you know, wouldn't look out of place in the, the shelves in the Imperial War Museum that we saw yesterday. Oh look, stem ginger and lemon biscuits. So the biscuits, £8.50, £10 for the digestive ones, the hot cocoa is £10. Georgian blend loose leaf tea for ten pounds. Empire blend loose leaf tea for ten pounds. Christmas musical tin. I think the Fortnum ones, the Fortnum's ones are nicer. Got quite a sort of small stocking there. Some baubles that are filled with things. What's in these? Roasted almond coated milk chocolate, and then the gold ones have clotted cream fudge in them. Yeah. I've got these festive sacks, they're very, very cute, which you can obviously get personalised. That one's really sweet, my first Christmas. Then this one has Angus front and centre, so obviously I like a beer. Oh, but you know, I think that's the last few years they kind of add up outfit wise because that looks like one Lauren and I got not three years ago actually now. God, I keep going to say things happened last year that were not actually last year, they were the year before last year but last year just didn't happen and it's totally mucking with my mind. Um, but yeah, let's head up to the food hall. Heading up these stairs with the beautiful arrangements on the side. Okay, so I'm in the food hall now, so you've got chocolate, cherry and clementine mince pies for £10, classic mince pies for £10, so I think they're slightly cheaper than Fortnum's, um, a little mini Christmas cake for £18, 15 mini mince pies for £15, and the decorations down here are slightly different, so if you look at the, I keep wanting to say the wreaths, I can't remember what the official name for these is and it's really annoying me. Um, but yeah, the decorations around the doors, um, so it's, it's kind of like food themed here. So you've got clementines, some cranberries, eucalyptus, pine cones, cinnamon sticks. So it's slightly different to the rest of the store. Alcohol free vegan Christmas pudding for £12. You get decorate your own gingerbread house kit for £12.95. Don't think that's too bad either. All oh, the pasta looks so good. Sort of another festive fixture. So, classic Christmas pudding is £20. Brandy butter, five pounds. None of this is really particularly expensive, to be fair. Like, given where you are, it's not like, you know, the wreath that was 700 pounds. Now, I'm hoping you might have a sort of Christmas cake. So you'd get a chocolate cupcake, red velvet one, vanilla one, and they all look lovely, but none of them are particularly Christmassy. I'm sure I've seen them all before. Okay, so there are four Christmas items. So you've got the Grand Cru chocolate and salted caramel bobble, which is this one here. You've got a Santa hat, 
which is a red currant cheesecake base, mascarpone mousse, red glaze, and marshmallow finish. That's quite cheerful looking. We've got a chocolate cube, which is hazelnut crunch, chocolate sponge, hazelnut chocolate cremeau, chocolate mousse with gold lustre finish. And then the last Christmas item is your cake standard Yule log. So chocolate sponge, chocolate ganache, Madagascan vanilla chantilly cream. They had a reindeer one a few years ago that was just the cutest thing. I feel like these are nice, but they're not, not massively comparing. You've got this one here says it's Christmas. Profiteroles and a trifle. The apple crumble looks really good. I feel like I would just enjoy eating the apple crumble. And then you've got panettone, bread and butter pudding. And then your kind of standard one, sticky toffee, creme brulee, and then I, can, I presume that's tiramisu at the end. Quite into the apple crumble actually. Could be, could be talked into an apple crumble. We've got a laundry advent calendar. That's cute, quite into that found the official Christmas section so yeah another Christmas pudding there which is £8.50 um, I feel like again we've kind of seen most of this already last year was so kind of difficult for people and these things are planned so far in advance that people maybe had to kind of hedge their bets on where it would be this time this year um, so you've got some teas there Christmas spice tea £12, Christmas Spiced Earl Grey Tea £12, I would probably quite like that one. Then Christmas Spiced Green Tea down at the bottom for £12, Christmas Cake for £35. Then Christmas Hot Chocolate £13. Cranberry sauce with port, £6. Christmas ginger curd, £6. That sounds interesting. Christmas spiced honey, £12. Boxing day chutney, which I'm very tempted to, to. I don't think I'd buy that and then try and cart a glass jar home um, on the train, especially given I have my luggage with me because I'm just going to check out tomorrow and take it. I'm not going to take it and then have to go back to the hotel before I go for the train. So. This could be an online order. Uh, fig and balsamic chutney also sounds excellent. Breakfast marmalade, again all of these things are £6. Six spice Victoria plum and berry jam, Christmas mustard and the Christmas ginger curd. Might get my grand that, she likes gingery things. We've got a chocolate chip shortbread bobble. That's £10 and you can obviously put the bobble on your tree afterwards. Panettone. Yeah, I think we've, we've kind of seen all of this now. They've got a little mini Christmas patisserie set which has a meal foy, grand crew chocolate cali, padded signature pistachio and cherry delice and hazelnut tart. So that is £20 for those little five mini cakes. Right, we're going back through the, the real food again. Um, let's go into the chocolate hall. Hopefully there's maybe more Christmassy things to be had in the chocolate hall. Oh, the smell when you walk in here. I'm more of a savoury person. I'm not even a massively sweet tooth person, but the smell when you walk in here is amazing. Oh, look. 007 Pine British Milk Chocolate Bar. Gingerbread truffles or peppermint cookie truffles. This is really cute, the Peter Rabbit advent calendar. We've got the chocolate truffle advent calendar, we saw that downstairs. And then the other advent calendars, oh what's this, did we see this yet? Festive British confectionery section for £20. Upside down. 
competitive British confection section a collection of milk chocolate coated butterscotch and honeycomb and festive flavoured peanut brittle and fudge. No thank you, don't like peanut butter or anything. Oh look, there's the advent calendar and you can see the truffles you get in it, they do look beautiful. And it's very nice when it's open and you've got that whole Harrods etching on it. It's quite impressive really. We've got this chocolatier counter. Chocolatier. These would all be beautifully packaged. Oh, look at that. That's stunning. Look, Finn the reindeer. Fun fact, Finn is one of my favourite boys names. Christmas figures. <laughs> so this advent calendar is very impressive looking and it's a pop-up one. That's really impressive, I like that. Look, these are cute, they're like little books and then they, they pop open like that. I like them, they're really sweet. This is another nice advent calendar, so that's what that one's like when it's open. And you could definitely keep that one and reuse it. Another advent calendar, this one's £50 and it doesn't even seem to be that impressive, so that would indicate the contents must be amazing. Oh, a Pierre Marcolini advent calendar now. That I would very much enjoy. Very, very much. We've got Godiva advent calendar here. Um, this is one of the more affordable ones, it's £20. Pounds. And they've opened. They're like behind plastic, so it's, it's like display opens, but you can see sort of little figures that you're getting in there. That's a really nice one. For being a nice advent calendar without being stupidly expensive. Harrods is usually like one of my favourite stores at Christmas but as I think I said during the tour I was a touch underwhelmed this year. I feel like I was a touch underwhelmed by quite a few places this year. I think just there was so much uncertainty last year it was on then it was off, things were open, they were closed and obviously with commercial properties decisions have to be made so far in advance. They were probably making the decisions for this time of year this year at this time of year last year or like very early into this year you know probably were trying to hedge their bets figure out where we'd be so I do think it was maybe a touch less than it's been in previous years but still Christmas at Harrods it's still a lovely experience it's still one of my favourite shops and um, so I hope you enjoyed coming around it with me on this tour thank you very much for watching as I say, if you've not seen my Fortnum and Mason tour, I will link that up because I feel like if you like Harrods at Christmas tour, you probably would also enjoy the Fortnum and Mason Christmas tour. That was very Christmassy. Um, you know, I, I felt they they committed, but I don't know if that's to do with the fact that they were open because they're a food shop anyway. So, you know, they maybe knew they were going to be open regardless of what was going on. So yeah, I feel like Fortnum and Mason is probably my taking the crown for my favourite shop this year so far. I hope you've enjoyed this nonetheless. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you tomorrow for days three and four of my London trip. Bye!